uh, the neighborhood I grew up in, a blue collar neighborhood, uh, it's not unusual in those neighborhoods for the wife to handle the money and the guy just goes to work and brings home the bacon. Yes. And, um, and too often, uh, relationally in those situations, what ends up happening is the guy who's working and bringing home the money in that scenario, it's a classic 1950s almost scenario. Yeah, right? Every every electrician I've ever met has his wife do the billing. There you of go. Of course. Same thing. It, what, what happens too often in, in that is he's ends up having to ask his wife for money like she's his mommy. And this maternal thing ends up happening that's really weird in their marriage where he becomes increasingly adolescent and doesn't ever grow up and make grown-up decisions with good decision-making paradigms. Instead, he just says, well, my wife, my mommy, mommy said I couldn't go out tonight because we don't have any money. And I seem like as much as I work, we'd have some money. And then you get that routine, and he's, he just Boy, I've seen that so many emotionally. times. Yeah, me too. And so I'm, I'm always yelling at those guys because they're my guys. I mean, that's that's a, that's who I grew up with. And I'm just yelling, hey, man, be a man. You're not a little boy. Your wife does not want to be married to her baby. She wants to be married to a man. And quit being his mommy. Quit being his mommy and taking care of his little self. My God. You two sit down like two dadgum, <laughs> two dadgum adults and look at this thing and go, we're stupid and we need to stop being stupid. You know, look at this. We bought you a truck you can't afford. We've got a $600 bass boat payment because you couldn't catch a fish with the other one. You're killing me here. <laughs> and th this is this is America. This is who we, and it's me too. I was the same guy. So I got a PhD in DUMB. I, I did it worse than all these people put together. Think about it. So I, I know what stupid looks like because I looked at him in the mirror for a long time. So, um, but yeah, you got to get on the same page and you both have to be grown ups. And, you know, the opposite of that, the, the I guess the, the inverse of that is the the sweet little wife who the husband is domineering and takes care of everything, and she has no idea what's going on, which was really, in a sense, where Sharon was when we went broke. She was just doing her thing over there and assumed I had a brain, which was a bad assumption. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it's – and then here's a horrible situation with that one. That could go on for 40 years and never really have a problem. He dies. And she is a uh, an infant in terms of her ability to even write a check. She has no idea where their investments are. She has no idea how to pay a light bill. In some cases, I've met him. She's not even pumped her own gas into her car. He's always done that, and and she's left in this infantile state emotionally. And then her grown kids are having to come along and we're having to train 52-year-old mom how to be like a grown-up woman now because she's been a kept woman, you know that saying, you know, in, in that sense. And that's not good for her. That's not good for her. She needs to grow up. And it's, and he's not doing her a favor by taking care of the little woman, you know, or whatever bull crap is going on in their emotions there. So these two thoroughbred horses in the marriage that both step up, lock into the same harness at the same speed, both with their different giftings, but both with the level of responsibility. These are the people that build quality families, quality legacies, and build wealth almost every time. It's incredible to watch.